In this episode, what is old is new again. So I suggest that you join me for The Beatles' Twist and Shout, which was released in 1964, hit the charts again in 1986, and again a third time in 2010. In our previous episode, we saw how, by using the Turbo Assembler, we're able to do some interaction with the VIC chip and change the border color of the display. And that's with some pretty simple commands where we want to load the value 1 into the accumulator and then store the accumulator into the memory location D020 and then we want to return from subroutine. And if we assemble this program and execute it, which has been stored at the memory location 4096, we can call it and we can see that the border color is now white. But this is, you know, kind of a lot to keep in your head, the state of the different registers and returning from subroutines and what memory locations you want to access. So it would be kind of handy if perhaps we had the ability to do this in a higher level programming language. There is a C compiler for the Commodore 64 and other 6502 based machines called CC65, which has been around for a, quite a while and is open source. And it actually does provide us some of these abilities. So we have this program that is a C program. And what we are doing is taking the memory location D020 and casting it to an unsigned car pointer and then dereferencing this pointer and let's assign the value 1 for the sake of consistency and in fact we can put this in hexadecimal also so this should look pretty similar to the assembly language program that we showed earlier we are assigning the value 1 to the memory location D020 and then we are returning from our subroutine. And using the CC65 compiler, we can compile this program. And that has output to the file test.s. And there's a bunch of stuff here at this top that are directives to the assembler. But what we see, the end result, is that we have our main procedure and it is loading 0 into the register X, loading 1 into the register A, then storing A into D020. And at this point, we can see a direct corollary to the program that we wrote in our assembler by hand. And then we return from the subroutine. Now, this assembler, this compiler, is doing a few things that are not ideal. The first is that it is initializing register X, and there is simply no need for that and then it is initializing the register X again and it's certainly not being used and then this little interesting tidbit where it jumps to location 1 which is the immediate next statement so this is also a waste so essentially we have one two three statements that are four even that are not doing anything for the sake of our program and for what we need this to do. But this should nonetheless be a program that can compile with our assembler. So let's try to copy this and paste it into our Commodore 64 and see what we get. I'm going to reset the state of our Commodore 64 emulator now by sending the C command to it and telling it we want to do a cold start. And now I am going to do a little bit of cheating and paste from our virtual Linux that we were just looking at. And you'll see here there are some statements that it doesn't like, and these question marks are because there are tabs at the beginning of each line. Let's just go ahead and delete these tabs. And we can see this is mostly working, although there are 
some things that are confusing the assembler here because it's written on the Commodore 64, so it's not quite as robust. We can't handle capital letters anywhere. So let's get rid of that. And ooh, our RTS went away. All right, so this is basically the same thing here now, with just a little bit of formatting so that it worked on our Commodore 64. We are jumping to memory location at this label, L0001. We have L001 label here. We return from subroutine, and we are assigning the value 1 to the memory location D020. So we should be able to assemble this and execute it and see that the border color turns white again. So this is all good and well, but what can we do about the efficiencies, inefficiencies, that we see in this example? Well, it turns out that there has been a lot of advancement in compilers in the last many years, if we're taking into account from when the Commodore 64 was popular. The last 32 some odd years has seen huge advances in what compilers are able to do, and the more popular, more well-maintained compilers have an extreme amount of optimizations they can do. So let's just start by looking at our test.c example again. And this is a very straightforward one. Let's see what happens if we compile it with a modern GCC with optimizations enabled. Let's first see what optimizations our CC65 compiler can do if we give it the chance. We have the dash O optimize option, and we can see the results here are that it now is quite a bit smarter and that it is not pre initializing LDX when it's not using it, but it is post-initializing LDX, and then it is transferring the X register to the A register, and then returning from subroutine. So this is definitely quite a bit more efficient than the previous version, but what we really want to get to is the result where we are simply loading one into the memory location to D020 and returning from subroutine. So looking at a modern GCC, which I am using GCC5 here. And we are going to tell it to write the assembly output to the console window. And we are looking at now Intel assembly instead of 6502 assembly. This is what your Intel-based CPU is going to be executing. And this has a a fair bit of extra heavy lifting that it's doing, in fact, compared to the version that we were just looking at from CC65. So let's go ahead and turn on optimizations for it as well. And now, looking at our main, we see that this is going straight. It's moving the value 1 into the memory location 53280, which is what corresponds to D020. And then it is zeroing out the A register, is what we're looking at here, and returning from the subroutine. And the rest of these things that start with dots and such are assembler labels and directives. So this is getting us very close. And now the question is, can we take advantage of that? And I have been working on this little tool that I've called x86 to 6502. So we can take this and pipe it through my x86 to 6502 executable. And now our output is that we are loading the value 1 into the Y registered. Then we are storing Y at 53280. And then we are zeroing out A because we are doing a direct translation of what this X or of A to A is happening on the Intel compiler. And then we are turning from subroutine. 
and that's pretty cool. I like that. So let's try to take this just one step further quickly and see what we see. Let's now make a function that updates a value. And it is going to take a 16-bit integer. So let's see how we can specify that. We're going to this location. And we are writing a value. So here, we're going to do a similar little maneuver. Now we have a reusable function, and we can say update value of d020 to the value of 1. Just for consistency, we'll put that in hex, even though it's meaningless here. And now let's see what we can get with our GCC test. We get the exact same output again. We have a couple of errors in our conversion, but they are in functions that are not used. And But we do have here the main output that we're looking at that is exactly the same. Now, comparing this back to our CC65 compiler with optimizations. We are now seeing a call to our update value function did not inline it. And let's try turning on the inlining option and see if we get anything different. No, we're still making a jump to the update value function so this has now gotten quite a bit more complicated because it has to do a push, set up a function call, call the function, and then in the function here, it's actually doing the writing of the value and none of the values have been inlined. So I hope you can see the advantage in trying to take advantage of modern compilers and get the best optimization we can and now we've got this tool that we can play with that can automatically do conversions from x86 assembly for us to 6502 assembly and take advantage of all of the advancements in compilers in the last 30 some odd years.